Some months ago, I published a tutorial on how to move a project from iMovie to Final Cut Pro. But some of the viewers of that video have said that it left them somewhat in the lurch. Sure, it showed them how to switch to Final Cut Pro, but left them having to search for other videos on how to use Final Cut. Yes, I have beginner's lessons in my playlists, but they don't necessarily cater for someone who's built up their knowledge of iMovie and doesn't need to relearn those skills. But they still need to know where to start with the more advanced features that Final Cut Pro offers. No need to search the internet for how to learn Final Cut Pro as an iMovie user. It's all in this video. In order to cover everything that you need to know as an iMovie user starting in Final Cut, this will be a much longer video than my usual. If you haven't had time to go through all of this video now, save the video, use it as a reference. Timestamps and chapter markers are in the description below. I'm Bruce McBride and I can provide one-on-one -on -one personal tuition over the internet. Just click on training FinalCutPro.com. iMovie is free to use, so why would you spend $300 on Final Cut Pro? That sounds like a lot of money. But there are some considerations. For instance, Adobe Premiere is a subscription-based model that's $30 a month or $240 annual sub. Sure, updates are free, but so are Final Cut's upgrades. Which means that after 18 months, it's a break-even. And you have Final Cut forevermore with no subs. Also consider that with the current 90 days trial available for Final Cut, you're not committing any cash until you're well versed on how the software works. Follow this tutorial and I'll have you up and running in a day or so and proficient within a week. Then you have the rest of the 90 day trial to make up your mind. But for me, the most important consideration is based around your valuable time. As an iMovie user, you are well on the way to stepping into Final Cut Pro with that basic knowledge already up your sleeve. This tutorial will build on that knowledge so you'll learn faster and with more understanding of the correct way to do things. You'll most likely have been working with iMovie for some time and you will have got to the point where you need to boost things up that you can't do with iMovie. But those that you've used in iMovie will work the same in Final Cut. The magnetic timeline works the same. Zooming into the timeline is the same. Command plus and command minus. So what we're going to do here is build on your knowledge and get you running quicker. And here are the things that you mostly missed in iMovie. First of all, multiple stack video tracks so you can build split screens with more than two images. The ability to green screen a stack clip as well as make it get picture in picture and split screen you're not restricted to just one of those choices. And three, the organization of your clips in Final Cut will allow you to pre-edit and get to know where your good footage is located. Favorites are in iMovie as well as Final Cut Pro, but you'll be able to create bins and keyword collections to further help you organize your pre-edited clips. And fourth, there's more exporting options not just save file, now that direct export to YouTube and video has been nobbled in iMovie. I'm not going to go on here, but there's a list in the description below with this video, and it covers the main features you're missing in iMovie, and gives you timestamps to where you'll find them in this tutorial. I guess the big question you're wanting to be answered, is Final Cut worth the $300? over the free iMovie editing experience. Well, of course, it will depend on your needs, but if you want to break free from the restrictions of iMovie, like the ability to monitor audio in Final Cut, that's reason alone to warrant the upgrade price. Audio is super important to keep viewers watching your video. If audio is too low or even too high, then viewers will drop off very quickly. I'll show you how to monitor audio levels and some basic ways to improve the sound of your audio. 
Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into what you'll be confronted with when you first open Final Cut Pro. In the earlier video, click above to access, I showed you how to transfer your iMovie project to Final Cut Pro. And this is what you'll see as it transfers into Final Cut. Everything is as you set it up in iMovie, but there are some differences behind the scenes. Only the clips of the project you transferred will come into Final Cut. Any clips not used in the iMovie project will need to be separately imported into Final Cut. You'll be able to readjust the edit points in the clips, shorten or lengthen them, but they won't show in the browser as they normally would in Final Cut. You'll see in a minute. To show a clip in the browser, right click on it, reveal in browser. You'll see the same orange lines indicating footage used as you would have seen them in iMovie. You can continue to edit and I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, I want to show you how to quickly get working in Final Cut should you not be transferring a project from iMovie. First create a new library and save it to your hard disk. Best to put it on a fast external hard disk or an SSD if you have one. By default, Final Cut Pro creates a new event, just as it does with a new iMovie library and gives it today's date. You also need to create a project as you would in iMovie, but the method here is different. Select New from the File menu, New Project. There's an automatic mode and that will use the format of your footage, or you have some choices. We'll use the auto mode here, but click the eye above for a video that explains the choices and a more detailed way to start editing. Once you've created the project, the icon with the striped lines at the top, it will appear in your browser under several positions in the sidebar. That allows you much more flexibility than iMovie and so works differently. We'll look at this in more detail once we've started the edit. Your next step is to import some footage and to be able to edit in the same way as you did in iMovie. Drag your footage from the computer or use the downward arrow. I'll use the arrow. Select your clips. Now this next part is important. In the right panel, select Copy to Library. Select Create Optimized Media. And the other settings leave them as they are for now. Select Import. Now I'd like to discuss the sidebar that we looked at a moment ago. When you're selected on the library, you see all the contents of the library. In fact, when you're on either of the other two at the moment, you'll also see everything. But let's change that. Select File Menu. Select New Event. Select that event in the sidebar. There's nothing in it. Which simply means this event doesn't have anything in it yet. But it is ready for you to import something into it. Click the event above. It does have content. Now click on the right pointing arrow next to Smart Collections. When you're selected on Smart Collections, you see different selections of what the library contains. Select All Video. You now can only see your video clips. Select Audio, and now you can only see audio. Select Favourites, well you haven't got any as yet. Favourites are created in the same way as iMovie. Press the F key when any selection is made in the browser. A green bar appears above. Select Projects and your project appears. Select Stills and your stills appear. I'm going to spend a bit more time here on further clip organisation before we start to edit. And if you're not concerned about organisation, then best to skip this next section and go to this timestamp, which will take you to placing clips in the timeline. There is a brilliant way of organising and categorising the pre-edited clips prior to the actual edit. That's not possible in iMovie. When you've got a lot of footage, it's much better to pre-edit the clips, organise them into good, usable or maybe needed clips. It's also helpful to have your outdoor scenes and those of different subjects kept together. So you can quickly access them when you're on a roll in the actual edit, so you don't lose your flow looking for that clip that you know is somewhere in the footage. Final Cut Pro will do some of this automatically on import. It will recognise scenes with people in them, 
and create collections, one person, two persons, or wide shots. And as we mentioned in iMovie, favourites are a way of categorising your clips. But favourites are all lumped together in one category. Final Cut has keywords and smart collections. You've already seen some of the smart collections created for you. You can make your own based on metadata in the footage. I won't go into that at this stage, but if you're into organisation, I'll be uploading a video on this for more advanced users. The really useful feature is keywords. And this will allow you to pre-edit portions of a clip that you want in your edit. Keywords could be words as outdoors, animals, or buildings. But for this example here, let's work on three keywords to categorize the quality of the footage you're about to edit. So we'll have good shots, usable shots, and maybe usable shots. You'll guess what will be contained in these categories. The good will be used, the usable most likely used, and the maybe if you're short of footage in the edit. Select the first clip, 0004. This is a very short clip, so I'll need all of this. So we're going to put that with the good label. Make sure the whole clip has a yellow outline and press Command K, and type in good shots. Expose the arrow to the left of the event, and you'll see that keyword. Click on it, and there's the 0004. Now back to the event, and select 0005. I only want a small portion of this for the good, so I'll click and drag that portion so the yellow outline appears. Now drag that yellow portion in the good keyword. View the keyword so you can see that one has the whole clip and the other is just a portion of the clip. Now go to 0012 and select a small portion of that at the beginning. Press Command plus K and type Maybe Shot. Select a portion of clip 0048. Press Command plus K. Type Usable Shot. Now check your event. There are the keywords for you to start your edit with. Now let's get on with the edit. We'll move some clips into the timeline, and your knowledge of iMovie will really help here. Select your clip or portions of the clip in the browser, as you would in iMovie, and move these into the timeline with either E, W, or Q keys. And they're in the middle menu bar here. Or you can drag your clips into the timeline if you're used to doing that. You can edit the timeline as you did in iMovie. Shorten and lengthen clips, move, adjust audio. And, as you would in iMovie, you can use the Range tool. Click R in the keyboard, change the height of the clip by selecting a film strip icon in the middle menu bar. Now drag the yellow cursor over the area you want to change. Drag the audio line up and down. So those are the things that you've done in iMovie. Now let's have a look at some of the differences in Final Cut. And first we'll look at where transitions are located. To the far right of your screen in the middle menu bar, you'll see the transition icon. Click it. This is made up of a sidebar of categories and the panel on the right has the content of these categories. There's a total of all categories at the top, all, and at the bottom is a search field that will search each category, or all, if that is selected. And here's a major advantage over iMovie. You can add third-party transitions and effects, and these are both called plugins, so you can really build up your range of effects that were not available in iMovie. I suggest you search Google Final Cut Pro plugins to get an idea of the options. There are hundreds of companies offering them. To add a transition is much the same as in iMovie. They go in between clips that's known as an edit point. So, click on an edit point and double click the transition or select the transition in the browser and drag it to an edit point. And now effects. You didn't have anything really like this in iMovie. So, we'll select the effects button 
They are shown in the same way as transitions with a sidebar of categories that show the content in the right panel. And these show both video and audio effects, and this is the area where you would select the green screen effect. So let's just look at one of these, and I'll select comic effects, and this is the same process as with transitions. Now you can do something that was not even possible in iMovie. There's an inspector, and this is similar in concept to Keynote or Photoshop. Here you can adjust and modify items in the timeline, including effects and transitions and any clip in the timeline. Select the clip in the timeline you've just added the effect to. Open the inspector. It's the tab at the top right in Final Cut window next to the Share tab. At the top of the inspector there are four icons at the moment. A film strip, a triangle pointing down to the left, a speaker symbol, and an eye for information. The active tabs turn blue and the others will be white. Click the film strip icon. You'll see the comic effect at the top of the inspector. You'll be able to modify it here. Effects can be disabled by clicking on the blue tick mark. You'll see many other items in the inspector and we'll look at these as we're using titles and generators which are accessed from the top left in Final Cut. It's a T on a white background and that turns blue when selected. There are two major categories behind that tab, titles and generators. Let's first look at titles. There are many more titles than there are in iMovie and they're much more easily modified in the inspector as well as millions available from third-party developers as plugins. Click the right pointing arrow to the left of the word titles. These are listed in much the same way as transitions and effects with categories in the left sidebar and the contents in the right panel. The search is at the top right and searches on the selected category only. To get you going, let's just use a simple one there to give you the idea. Select Build In Out and select Continuous in the right panel. Drag it above the clips in your timeline or between two clips as you would do an iMovie. The word Title appears in the viewer. You can click on this and position it where you want in the viewer, not restricted as you are in iMovie. Look in the inspector and you'll see a new tab at the top in blue, and the word title is highlighted. Start typing now and your words will change. If you look further down the inspector, you'll be able to change fonts and make other text adjustments undreamed of in iMovie. Scroll to the bottom of the inspector to face, and hover to the right and click show to change the color of the text. Let's select red. Whenever you make changes in the inspector, you can undo those changes by clicking on the curly arrow, always at the far right of the selection. And now for something not possible in iMovie. 3D text. Make sure the text is highlighted at the top. Then scroll down and tick the box next to 3D text. Scroll up until you see rotation. Click and move the X, Y and Z circles. Click the T tab that now shows at the top of the inspector to see further adjustments. From here we'll look at generators. Close the titles tab and expose the generators tab. Let's use textures for background. Drag grunge into the timeline. Go to the inspector and select different textures next to type. Generators are where you will store opener templates from third party developers. And for instance, let's have a look at this one that I put in here. This is a simple one to open the yacht racing. As I mentioned earlier, there are many other adjustments to be made in the inspector. And let's look at those that you will need to know when you're beginning this adventure with Final Cut Pro. And the first we'll look at is the audio. Click on a video clip in the timeline that has audio attached. Look in the inspector and click on the speaker symbol. The things you need to know at this early stage are, you can click on audio analysis 
and you'll see that at this stage it's saying not analyzed. But click on the magic wand and it will auto-analyze for you. Green ticks will show where it's tried its best. Or you can try your own adjustments. That's trial and error. I've got to say there's a lifetime of knowledge to get audio right, so don't be too disappointed on what you achieve. Sometimes it's better to leave things alone until you've learnt more. Now, the most important thing that Final Cut has that iMovie doesn't have, and we've mentioned this before, it's audio monitoring. Click on the audio meters in the middle menu bar. A bigger version will appear at the far right of your effects browser. And this is what you should remember. Audio levels should peak between minus 12 and minus six. Never over zero. And if they do go over zero, you'll get a warning light. Turn it down. If you watch while the video is playing, little white lines are at the top of the green meters to show where the peaks have been. This is what indicates the minus 12 to minus six range. And finally, I'll give you a taste of the color corrections and also the instant color changes you can make with video looks. Select a clip in the timeline. Click on the triangle in the inspector and it will turn multicolored. Click on corrections and select color board. And this will get you started at least. But I suggest you progress to using the color wheels as soon as you can because they're much more flexible. But in the meantime, using the color board. There are three tabs at the top. From the left, color, saturation, and exposure. You always start from the right hand side. Did I say that again? You always start from the right hand side. Exposure. This changes the brightness. There are four dots in the window and they're represented below as master, shadows, midtones, and highlights. The colors of the dot represent the shades that you're going to change. To get a feel for it, move the white dot all the way up to add brightness and all the way down to darken. This just changes the brightest area in the video. I have to say that when you're making changes, only move a little bit, but by moving all the way as you have here, you can see the range that is available. Do the same with midtones and black. The master changes all three shades in one go. And a tip for beginners. And from experience, unless you really have bright daytime images, only increase the highlights and just decrease the mids and blacks to compensate. If you increase mids and blacks for darker images, you'll introduce grain or shimmer in the video. And now the saturation tab. And this has got the same concept dots as the exposure has. Master, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And these increase and decrease the amount of color in the image. But be careful, don't overdo the increase in color. It can make the images look very unrealistic. And then finally, there's the color tab. This lets you change the color tones of the image and it has the same concept of the four dots, but this time the master is in the main window. And before you make any changes, understand this. There's a center line. When you drag a dot above the line, you increase that color shown in the image. When you drag a dot below the line, you decrease the amount of that color. But at the same time, increase an opposing color. For instance, drag the highlight dot into the blue. The bright parts of the image turn blue. Drag it directly down and it'll turn green. Drag the master dot to the top of the green. Now drag it to the bottom of the green. It'll be magenta. Now for a dramatic way of changing color without having to go through all of the above. And this process uses color looks. Select a clip in the timeline. Select your effects browser. Scroll the left sidebar until you see looks. 
Hover your mouse over the thumbnails in the right panel. You'll get a preview of how they will change the clip in the timeline. To use them, drag the thumbnail inside the clip in the timeline. And one last word on color correction. Move the dots dramatically to see what's possible, but have your final adjustment as small as possible. Work on the principle, a little bit is too much. And last but not least, exporting or sharing. Make sure your timeline is selected. Click on the share button at the top right and select master file. Select the settings tab. Select video codec and select H.264. If you look down a little, you'll see the likely size of the file. Select Next. You'll now be able to save your file. And when the file is saved, you'll get a notification at the top right of your screen, and that will let you go to that file. And there's one important extra that I'd like to point out, that you won't have an iMovie that is in Final Cut. You can export just a portion of the timeline. So let's do that. Select a clip of the timeline, press the R key and drag a range selection. Now go to the share menu as you did before. And this time when you look in the window, you'll see the shorter length of your range selection that's about to be exported. Oh, and at the beginning I mentioned split screen images. These can be done in Final Cut. Click the link above to find out how. I'm sure you're aware you've covered a vast range of items in this video. I'd suggest you save it below and come back to view it again in a day or so. It's unlikely that you will have absorbed everything, first or even second time through. And if I can leave you with one thought, just jump in and get started. But best not to learn on a project that has a deadline, as you'll be stressed to get finished and miss out trying different things out. I hope you've learnt a lot from this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and press the bell. There are new videos every Sunday.